Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale scratch-built German initial production Tiger 1. Since the last video, progress has been made to the tank's rear engine deck and the whole rear portion of the vehicle is now complete. Starting with what was added, we have here the tank's telescoping snorkel. The snorkel would be attached to the vehicle when the tank would be needed to ford either through a river or through a lake. The snorkel itself is designed to have fresh air get pumped into the vehicle for the crew to breathe in as well as for the engine to work. The snorkel itself is a relatively new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line and one unique feature about this kit is that is designed to assemble and disassemble like the real snorkel. The kit itself is all made out of PVC with rest and end caps and is all plugged together assembly. The set also includes this threaded adapter ring here. This threaded adapter ring is what allows the snorkel to be inserted into the center position of the grill work. Moving our way from the snorkel, we'll start here with the tank's center hinge mechanism. The center piece here is what m connects the tank's engine hatch to the tank's firewall. Now, the Tiger I you had several different incarnations of this part during its production run. This part here is the EastCoastArmory.com rest and center hinge and had to be slightly backdated for use with this initial production Tiger I. The change was that probably within 1943 or so, a small triangular axis panel hatch was added over here in this section. This triangular axis hatch is present on the East Coast Armory resting kit. However, since it was not present on the initial production vehicle, I had to go ahead and machine that molded in axis hatch away, thus backdating it to the initial version that we have over here. Moving our way to the tank's engine hatch, we can see this very large cylindrical air intake. The Tiger had two air intakes on its engine hatch. It had a smaller rectangular one towards the front and a larger cylindrical one towards the rear. The, this one here is the EastCoastArmory.com air intake. This here is the early version of the air intake in that it's larger in diameter and it has this, this large bevel to it. This knob here in the center would be used to remove the, this pan or it would be used to, if you screw it, if you tighten it, the whole pan would then, get clo would then close the gap here to the engine hatch and would create a watertight seal so when the t if the tank was forwarding, no water would be able to get into the watertight engine compartment. Tiger 1 during its production run had two types of air intake pans. The first one is the one that we have here which was present with the bevel. The second production version was slightly smaller and had a rounded edge appearance. It, it's, rather than the bevel it was a slight little curve. That one is primarily used on late production steel wheel Tiger 1's. Another detail as of note of the air intake is the interior portion of it. The early version had four large slits that were machined into the mounting hub. The later production versions, uh, the one with the smaller air pan, received a different number of slits. If we can also see on the center here, this is the actual part that the knob that we saw on the outside would thread into. These details are all molded into the EastCoastArmory.com resin component. Moving our way from the air pan, we have the forward air intake. The Tiger One's initial air intake was very simple. It was a basic steel rectangular plate that was elevated over the engine deck via these studs. When the tank would be ready to ford, the studs were removed and the same plate would be bolted flush to the engine hatch, thus creating the watertight seal necessary for forwarding operations. With the advent of the tank's FIFL system, which were two large air 
filters that we mounted on either side of the rear hull here. The FIFO systems would connect to this section of the engine hatch with a large V-shaped air duct. This plate here was moved and stowed in the front position over here of the vehicle's hull. It was kept there so that if the tank would again be used for forwarding operations, the V air duct would be removed, the plate would be replaced in its place, and thus creating the watertight seal for forwarding. Once the FIFO system was dropped, a third and final type of air duct was created. It was a two-piece duct in that it was a cast metal frame with a steel plate on the, on the top. That differed from the early version in appearance in that how the early version is completely see-through, the third version was sealed off on all three sides. The only part that would be open for the air to flow into the engine deck would be from the back part here. Moving to the engine deck itself, or the engine hatch itself, we have here a simple hatch retaining hook. This hook, when the hatch would be in the open position, would snag on this latch over here and would prevent the hatch from, or lock in position, prevent it from slamming down. This hatch is also the initial style hatch. The Tiger I had several types of engine hatch layouts during its production life. This being the first. It has, what signifies that this is being the initial version is that it is missing two very prominent hooks that were retracting hooks that would be positioned over here and here on the side of the engine deck. These hooks would be for a crane to actually come down and pick up the engine hatch if you want to get access into the engine completely without the engine hatch or the centerpiece in the way. In their place we have here these special type of locks which are custom machined. These locks are, t are what actually hold the engine deck it actually locks the engine deck to the tank's upper hull. A special wrench would be used to um, to lock and unlock these. This These locks are prevalent on all of the production versions of the engine hatch. What makes this one unique though is that it has these smaller key locks over here. These key locks here are to further lock the hatch to the upper hull when the tank would be used for forwarding. Once the forwarding system was dropped, these locks were also eliminated. Opening up the engine hatch, we can see that also the interior portion of the engine hatch has been detailed. These here are the main locks, and these ones here are the, snorkel, the special snorkeling locks. This piece of tape here is just of being kept here to keep paint from entering the engine compartment while the tank is being built. Once the model is finished, this will be removed and you will be able to see the engine from the exterior of the vehicle. As we mentioned earlier, this here is the air intake, the dish, the air pan, and we have an added well bead. The engine hatch itself is all fabricated out of pieces of Lexan and sheet styrene and are all fastened together. The hatch has a nice solid feel to it, which aids in, its, in the model's realism. Moving our way from the engine hatch, we will now cover the tank's grill work. The tank's grill work is a new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line. The grill works themselves are very detailed and, as we notice, have all of their rough sand cast textures in the grills where they should be. This detail was seen in person at the vehicles from the Aberdeen Proving Ground on such vehicles as the Panther and the Jag Tiger as well as their Panzer IVs. German tanks are mainly known for being very flat in appearance. However, their grill works are actually quite coarse in person, especially in between the grills. The grills have their proper cutouts in that they're not completely solid throughout the entire ribs. We, we ha there is a set pattern to where they connect to the grill frame. This is all captured in the castings. The center hinge here have large round 
divots casted into them. These were prevalent on earlier vehicles. However, were still seen floating around on some later production units as well. One unique feature that I built into the grill work is the ability to unscrew the fueler, the fueler armored cover caps. This way we can see or have access to the bleeder valve here on this side of the fan work and to the filler cap on this side of the grill work. The Tiger one, this this is you need to to fill up the radiators to get access to the radiators, you need to remove these armor cover caps to fill in the to refill the fluids. To refuel the Tiger, you would need to remove these armor cover caps here to get access to the fuel tanks. Now one unique feature that I built into this model was a fueling system to, refu to refuel the tanks smoke generator which will emit smoke from the exhaust system which was discussed in an earlier video. To refuel the smoke system I designed to use the actual gas tank axis filler caps to refuel the system. The way it would work is I would take the, ref the smoke fluid and I would stick it in the hole or the fueler spout here and it would then flow through some plumbing into the smoke system thus refueling it. And now I built this feature into both sides of the of the tank. This is in case if the tank is on display in a diorama or if it's being displayed at a show I could get readily I have readily available access to the smoke system without having to reach around or possibly not be able to get to the filler station. However with the thing with the caps on the other side I will always have plenty of access to refuel the system when necessary. Another detail that was built into the grill work is the ability to raise the fan grills. Now one piece of detail that immediately pops up is the fact that these grill works here are connected to a hydraulic cylinder or a hydraulic actuator. When the engineers and designers were first designing the Tiger One, they designed the grill works to be lit, to be hydraulically actuated. This was done because the designers didn't feel that enough cool air was being drawn into the cooling system to cool off the engine with all this grill work in the way. So they designed to have at a flick of a switch actuators that would raise the fan work or the, the, the grill work which would then allow cool air to then flow into the system. It was discovered though that once the tanks were being produced and when they came off the production line it was uh, discovered that enough cool air was being drawn into the system to cool the engine that the sh that the actuators were just not necessary so they were dropped very early in the production run. However, I installed them on this vehicle because this model is such an early representation of the Tiger One that I decided to add these two actuators as a unique detail. Even though the actuator system was dropped, their influence was still seen throughout the rest of the Tiger's production run. More notably, if we see here on the grill work where the actuator would mount directly to the grill, there is a small integrally cast mount that is built into the grill work casting. This mount here was in place for the actuator and even though the actuator system was dropped the mount was left where it would be. The mount was used up on throughout the early production run and then once the grills with the, with the mount were all used up the subsequent newer castings had this piece eliminated. Another piece that actually stayed with the Tiger for the rest of its production life was this small U-brace U-bracket that is welded to the tank's rear wall. This U-bracket is how the fans, fan clusters, mount directly to the firewall or to the rear wall here. And if we notice, there's a small clearance that would bend actually around the actuator. Because since the, even when the actuator system was dropped, this plate was left unchanged and was used for the rest of the Tiger One's production life. Closing the grills, we can actually still see the grill work 
or the fan work, and when the fans are turning, they will be seen from the exterior of the vehicle, which was one of the reasons that prompted me to build the tank's engine compartment detail in the first place. Like the tank's engine hatch, the grill work featured two hatch retaining hooks, which would keep the hatch or the grill in the open position when the crew would be getting access to the fans. This was, this was needed, especially when the hydraulic system was dropped, because you don't want to have this very large and heavy grill work falling on you. These hatch retaining latches come with the grill work set. Another piece of detail that was added to the model was the tank's air intake ducts. Over, covering the tank's fuel tanks, or fuel cells, would be these two sheet metal air ducts that would help funnel the cool air through the radiator. The way the system would work was that the air would be drawn through this grill here, flow through the radiator, and then out through the fans. To help facilitate this, a air duct was positioned on this side of the grill and was mounted to the underside of the grill. The fuel tank would be mounted directly below the air duct. There's a common misconception that if you look through the grill works, you could see the tank's fuel cell. That's not the case. There would be a sheet metal guard, and the sheet metal guard would also be painted in primer red, which would then elude people thinking that that was actually the fuel cell. And that concludes this video update for this 1-6 scale scratch-built German initial production Tiger 1. Stay tuned for more progress and more video updates. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more builds and for more detailed components. Thank you.